Let's make this a little bit harder. And so instead of just writing one single object, you know, let's create uh, several, uh, several objects of, of students that we would like to write as a list. Right? So for this, uh, we'll need to create a container of students right, uh, in our data model. Okay. Uh, so, so for this, uh, let's create a brand new Java object for students in here. So let's uh, create now the students. Students, right? And in there, uh, the only con uh, the only element uh, in there is the a collection. Oops, ah! a collection of students. Right. So let's put that in there. Where uh, collection? We need to import that as a Java util, and we'll need also the uh, the setters and getters. Uh, setters and getters for students. Select all. And we'll need also the constructors with all the fields and then the no argument constructor as well. Let's deselect and create it. There we go. So okay, so we're set. All right. So this is going to be the container for the uh, for our students. Notice that. Notice that. Uh, other than um, other than um, uh, as, as far as this is concerned, it's just a plain old Java object. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing special about it, right? Only when we, when we annotate it, right, then it becomes something that can be, you know, transformed or marshaled or unmarshaled by JAXB. But other than that, it can be instantiated and treated like any other Java object. There's nothing special about it, right? Uh, so let's, uh, let's uh, annotate it, right, saying that this is a, a root element, right? And we'll need to import that from JAXB. There we go. Uh, and the, the, the students, the set students is a field, is an element, and we'll have to import that as well. There we go. Okay. Um, all right. So, so let's continue now that we've annotated it. Right, we can now uh, actually create an instance of this list containing at least two uh, two students in there. Uh, so let's do that. Let's um, let's create here a um, new class here. We'll call it uh, Jacks B um, Student List to XML XML. There we go. And create a, a main here. And here we can now create a, a couple of students. Let's copy Alice and Bob. And here's Alice uh, with, um, this is Alice uh, Wonderland. And same thing with Bob. So this would be uh, Bob. And we'll create an instance of students and add <coughs> both of them in there. We'll need to import the collection. And the array list, and let's uh, oops, uh, let's indent these. Okay, very good. Now that we have that, but now that we have the list, uh, we can now do the same thing we did earlier, right? We um, well, actually, let's create the list right here. So student list, uh, student list. Right, and then we set the student list right there. Okay. All right. Now that we have this, the rest is the same as before. Right. Same thing. We uh, we create the new instance uh, for Jacksb. Uh, we need to um, load it and also catch any any exceptions. Uh, we need to create a marshaller. So this is the same thing as before. Right. There's nothing different here. Uh, Marshall will need to uh, import and the JAXB context. Oh, we ne never, never, we never, um, we never assigned it to anything, right? There we go. Uh, and then we'll, um, we'll create the Marshall. We can configure it and say that we want to be formatted. I want indentations, so please add indentations for me. 
right, we can configure that. Uh, we can uh, decide where do we want it to store. We're going to say in the students directory and uh, inside of our directory, CS5200, uh, then XML, then, then um, uh, JAXB students. Once we have students, then we, we need to load the file import. There we go. Uh, and then tell it to marshal the list of students into that XML document. Right, and let's indent that. There we go. All right. Okay, so let's try it out, see if it blows up. Uh, save. All right. Uh, and let's uh, do an F5. Okay, there's students XML. And there we have it, right? Uh, ooh, something went wrong. Oh, okay. See, notice, notice what's happening here, right? The root is, is correct, so students. Right? But notice that all the children are also students, right? It's using the name of the field, of the, uh, of the, the, the property name, right? And so we need to fix that. So let's do that. Let's go back to our, uh, our students here. It's grabbing this name, students, right? So to, 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 to name all the children. So what we're going to do is just we're just going to remove the S from each one of these students. Uh, and that's it, I believe. OK, let's go back. Uh, so this also is student, set student. And let's refresh this. Let's rerun this. OK, now it's good. Right, so notice that students is student. Right. Uh, you can also annotate it and say, you know, just don't worry about the actual name of the field. Right. Use this name for the for the for the for the for the tag. Right. You can override that. So you don't necessarily have to call the fields of the Java data model exactly the same as the fields that you want to use for the XML tag. Everybody good? All right. So so okay. So we can we can go backwards and forwards. We can uh, we can uh, well we we can write. Uh, XML from Java, a Java data model. So these two data models, we can we can uh, have them uh, represented in two different ways, either in memory, right, as a, as Java object instances, or in files, maybe to, to be transferred over to HTTP to somebody that I want to share this data from, or somebody who wants who's calling an API, right, and and asking for this data, right, so that it can be integrated with some other system out there, right. And we saw how to do that a couple of weeks ago using HTTP. We'll, we'll, we'll revisit that a little later as well. Uh, so there. Uh, so, so yeah, so we were able to uh, be able to generate XML. Uh, the next thing would be, to, you know, can I read XML, right? And reading XML is just as easy, right? Instead of using a marshaller, we use an unmarshaller, right? So let's do that uh, quickly. Let's take a look at that next.